You're pregnant, aren't you? Thanks a lot, Gary. The one thing I wanted more than the promotion, the one thing that you could say that was guaranteed to ruin this moment, and you had to say it. You've been promoted. Assistant personnel manager. Oh, well done. That's really good. And you're not quite as good as creating a new life. Is that what you meant? No. No, any idiot can make a baby. <laughs> That's why those Tory ministers keep knocking out like frogs for me. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. You know, we've been talking about babies. You surprised me with a bottle of champagne. It was a natural assumption. Oh, come on. Let's have a drink, eh? And you can tell me all about your new job. I know you're dying to. Pig. Is it more money? Naturally. And my own office. Seat in the executive dining room and occasional use of the company box. Not Wembley Stadium. Roll off the house. But don't panic, it's not compulsory. Well, I'm really pleased for you. We ought to go out, celebrate properly. You fancy the Malaysian place? Well, it'll be full. Well, if we hurry up, we can be there by 8.30, before they run out of their little wooden skewers. Yeah, okay. Right, go and change my jacket. Oh, Gary, leave it. Lonnie Stella wants another chat. She'll have me on there for ages. Cheshire. Macclesfield, to be precise. Well, this... this far? <laughs> we'll have to move. And when were you planning on telling me about this? As you were moving the furniture into the removal van? No, when I thought you'd say yes without an argument. No chance. Moving out of London is a complete non-starter. Why? Reasons. Name one. My mum and dad. Macclesfield's closer to Lincoln. Exactly. We'll have even less excuse not to visit them. <laughs> Yeah, and what about my career? Well, if we move to Macclesfield, you might be able to get one. <laughs> I think it's way up there on the list of the most hurtful things you've ever said to me. For your information, Ron is talking about making me head of marketing development. Oh. And how many are there in marketing development, Gary? One. <laughs> and who is that, Gary? Me. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be much of a promotion then, would it? I get my own rubber plant. <laughs> Look, they want me to go up there for a few days before I finally accept. Why don't you come with me? There's no point. Gary, this is a chance for us to make a fresh start. Why are you being so obstructive? I'm not being obstructive. I'm just not going to move, all right? <laughs> I'm pathetic. A pale shadow of a man. I am a weak-kneed eunuch. Tell me, do you still sleep in the house, or have you relegated yourself to a dog blanket in the backyard? <laughs> you didn't see the way I stood there trotting out these lame excuses for us not to move. I even told everyone you were going to make me head of marketing development. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And the truth is, I just couldn't face the idea of not being able to see Phoebe whenever I want. I should be right behind Yvonne. Supporting each other 100% is what marriage is all about. I'll have to tell Stella that. She'll laugh. <laughs> Why should she find that funny? How long have you been married now? Five years. That's strange. You still talk like a novice. <laughs> I don't think you're grasping the gravity of this situation. It's Friday. You always feel like you're selling Yvonne short on Fridays. You'll spend a few days with her and then your conscience will be clear. Of course, that means by Monday you'll feel bad for neglecting Phoebe and you'll spend time with her and the cycle starts again. Am I that predictable? The staff set the watches by you. <laughs> Could your staff know the intimate details of my personal life? You've told them, haven't you? <laughs> Only like you've got two birds on the go. <laughs> You've got some serious respect from the guys out there. I won't tell you what some of the women think, but if any of them offer you a coffee, don't accept. <laughs> well, I can't go on like this. I'm going to get a grip. Commit myself to one girl. So when Yvonne's in Macclesfield, I'm going to leave my clothes on a bridge, fake my own suicide and disappear. Yeah, well, just so long as you don't do anything rash. <laughs> well, I've thought about this. It's the best way. Yvonne can get on with making a success of her life. I'll move in with Phoebe. We'll get married and run the pub. And live happily ever after. The pressure's got to you. You're mad. You're out there with David Icke and anyone who fancies Fergie. My <laughs> mind's made up, man. You won't last in 1941. You'll keep nipping back for beer cans with widgets and wonder bra ads. <laughs> It'll be a clean and final break. I won't come back even if I'm tempted. Well, Yvonne's leaving at five. I've got a lot to do. I'm not going to let you do this. You're not leaving this office till you come to your senses. Are you going to stand there and stop me leaving this room? For as long as it takes. Hmm? <coughs> you 
Hello? Stella, hi. Ron? No, he's just moved down to the stock room with that little bond. <laughs> Hello, my love. No, don't be silly. That's just Gary's warped mind at play. Ron, you can't stop me. But I'm gonna need your help. Full pack? Yeah. What was all that banging and drilling? Oh, just doing a few of those little jobs I never got round to, you know. I'll fix that cupboard. Ooh, you sure it'll bear more than the weight of one packet of cupboard soup? <laughs> Masonry box. You could swing off it. Ooh, maybe I will when I get back. I love you. Oh, God, I love you too. Hey, I've got a surprise for you. Lunch. And there's a bottle of Chablis in the fridge. God, I'm stunned. Great DIY, great food. All you have to do is get your sexual performance up to scratch and you'll be fully trained. Well, I just wanted you to know how much I love you. Look, we're only going to be apart for a few days. Yeah. Have you had some kind of premonition? I mean, if Macclesfield's going to be struck by a tidal wave, I would like to know. <laughs> I know what this is all about. You're feeling guilty over the hard time you gave me about moving to Macclesfield. You realise I'm right and you just won't admit it. I knew it. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you say you were wrong. <laughs> there goes another rip. <laughs> Macclesfield is not the end of the world, Gary. No. But they do have the same postcodes. <laughs> I'll ring you when I get there. Well done, I, I won't be here. While you're away, I thought I'd go up to Scotland, you know, see if I can crack the Celtic market for Ron. <laughs> He's not very big, north of the border. Yeah. It's not a very big sound of it either, according to Stella. I'll see you when I see you then. Yeah. And don't forget, you're the best, OK? Yeah. You too. Bye, everyone. You got everything? Coal? Clean hanky? Still side up? I'll leave it on the bridge. Be sure to weigh it down. You don't want it blowing into some passing garbage scow. Yeah. Everyone will assume I've just climbed into a bin bag and had myself taken away by the council. <laughs> well, I guess this is it. I guess it is. Keep an eye on Yvonne for me. Why don't you stop being a pillock, come home and keep an eye on her yourself? Well, when we've done this... I miss you. It's been a blast having a mate who's a time traveller. <laughs> it's tough to tap that. Thanks for everything, Ron. What are you going to do? Huh? I'd rather you didn't. Us <laughs> printers were macho blogs. If our hands accidentally brush when we reach for the ketchup, we feel the urge to talk about rugby for half an hour. <laughs> Actually, manly and not excessively demonstrative. You have a good death. And the next time you see an old man on the tube, give up your seat, eh? Could be me. <laughs> Ron! Ron, I've only got the white fibers for the chip. from Southwark. I should have got a bus. Number 12 runs along there. Or is it the 42A? There was a time when I knew all the London bus routes off by heart. Of course, after Dan Kirk, that made me a security risk. 
If I should be captured by a Jerry Commando snap squad, taken back to Berlin and interrogated, they could use that information in their invasion plans. <laughs> Rich, if the Waffen SS do turn up in Trafalgar Square, it'll be by parachute. <laughs> Not on a big red London bus they're caught in Lambeth. <laughs> They're a devilish, devious bunch, the hunt. And what with me being a bobby and all, better to be safe than sorry. So, I forced myself to forget everything I knew about the transport system. I'd like to get to a position where I know nothing of any interest whatsoever. You're close, Reg. You're very close. Well, that's good of you to say so, sir. What's going on? Just Reg, making seconds seem like hours. I mean the seconds. You're not going away again, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm moving on. I've said goodbye to Cricklewood forever. Oh, so now it's my turn for the brush off, is it? Might be a bit stupid of me, seeing as I'm planning on moving in around here. Oh, Gary! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be pleased. Oh, I am. You hear that, Reg? Gary's going to come and live around here. Oh, good news. Welcome, son. Thanks. I've been hoping you'd do something like this. Are you going to stay? I don't know. I suppose you could rent the room upstairs until you find somewhere. You know, I never thought of that. Mm, oh, Bert. You read me like a book, can't you? We were made for each other, you and me. If you're looking for rooms, I know someone with a couple to rent. No, there's no rush, Reg. I'm fine, thanks. Well, they're very comfy, by all accounts. And if you don't mind my saying so, I don't think it's quite seemly for you two to be living here together. Actually, Reg, I do mind you saying so. Well, how do you Um, Reg is probably right. I don't think the boy would be ticking on it. It's only just round a corner. In Ravenscroft Street, above the hat shop. I'm sure it'll all be tickety-boo. The owner's a lady friend of mine. <laughs> I didn't know you had any lady friends, Rich. No, no, it's strictly a professional acquaintance. She just occasionally buffs up my helmet. <laughs> that is so disappointing. Look, there's nothing to stop me coming to visit you and your rooms, is there? There you go. Have that one on me. Oh, thanks very much. I can't tell you how chuffed I am. You're going to be spending more time round here, Gary. I really enjoy our little chats, and now we can have lots more of them. <laughs> And they'll all be about things of no interest whatsoever, won't they, Rich? Well, you can bank on it, Sam. It's not scary. I should hope so. Seven shillings and sixpence a week. No, it feels really homely. It's got a good blackout. Look. <laughs> Do you want to get me talked about? Huh? There's only one reason you pull the blackout during the day, hanky-panky. Oh, oh, no. Right. So, shall I let them up again then? <laughs> yes. Do you know I can buy a bedside cabinet? Oh, you'll be lucky. The only thing the shops aren't short of at the moment is shortages. Yeah. Never mind, I saw one in the garden of a bombed out house. I'll go and get that. That's looting. It's only an old broken bedside cabinet. What can they do to me? Shoot ya. <laughs> I suppose I could always pull that chair over and make do. What's your kitchen like? Small. You've got a mango. <laughs> yeah, all mud cones. Where'd you get this bacon? Which is? Well, it's all fatty. It's all the end. Gary, you never buy this stuff on show. You have to ask for what's under the counter, the stuff he keeps for his regulars. I mean, what happened to all your American contacts? I can't see them anymore. Security reasons. Oh. So that's why he decided to move here. You need me to do your shopping for you now. Well, that and other things. <laughs> She should have left that blackout down. Who is it? Miss Mrs. Sparrow. Landlady. There is a rule about having young ladies in your room. It's all right, I've already got one. I ought to go anyway. I'm due on duty with the WVS in half an hour. Okay. I'll see you later. You nosy old cow, stick this in your pipe. <laughs> Four hours I've spent wandering around looking for razor blades. Do you think I could find any? The thing that gets me is you know they've got some, but they're keeping them under the counter for the regulars. Tell me about it. In the queues. There's queues everywhere for everything. Is there really? I asked one bloke what he was queuing for, and he didn't know. He just saw the queue and got on the end of it. I mean, what's happening to people? Hey, 
Really? It's Hitler. You're making an exhibition yourself. No, I'm not. Gary, I am trying to watch this newsreel. Yeah, the uniformed Zeppelin is beating the surviving pilots from the Los Gatos first radio. <laughs> <laughs> the race to which Britain has become accustomed is a very small affair. Know what it does to me. Who gives a kiss, then? They didn't have any coffee, so I couldn't get you one. You didn't get your tea, did you? Now, be fair, that's not what you said. Coffee is what you asked for. There was no mention of any contingency plan. We could always go and get your own. Oh, thanks. The intermission started now. I'm surprised, surprised. There's a queue. All right, chair yeah, on. Oh, you're right for fire watching duty tomorrow night. What? Fire watching. Well, now you're resident in the area. You're obliged to go on the rota. Well, I don't know, Reg. My leg's still a bit sore from when I tripped over that bicycle in the blackout. Well, surely that won't stop you doing your bit. <laughs> no. No, yeah, you, you put me down, Reg. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we're unable to bring you tonight's main feature, Lady Hamilton. Oh. However, we can bring you the ever popular George Formby in Turned Out Nice Again. Thank you. How can anyone find that funny? Oh, I think it's funny. It's rubbish. Come on, let's go. Oh, I want to watch the film. But we can go back to my place. I have to go on duty later. Again? I saw more of you when I lived in Cricklewood. <laughs> All right, I'll wait for you in the parlour. I'm not hoping to not be delivery never arrived. But I'm not going back in there. It's giving me the right hump. All right, well, you go then. Rach can see me home. All right, I will. All right. See you tomorrow. I do still at it. <laughs> I don't know any of the docks tonight. See what's been happening. The war, the war, the war, George Formby, and surprisingly enough, the war. And where's all the scandal? Must be somebody in the royal family phoning somebody they shouldn't be. Well, this is what newspapers were like before the sun roll on page three. Last day of the test match today. There'll be highlights on the telly. <laughs> Just imagine sitting there watching it with a six pack and a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> God, I'm hungry. <laughs> There's only one thing not on the ration, and I'm not getting any of that. Are Where? I thought you were on duty. I phoned. Said I'd be late. I had to come round. I didn't want us to say goodnight the way we did, arguing. Oh, uh, that was my fault. Just because I've moved in around here doesn't mean you have to stop planning your life around me. No, no, I'd like to spend more time with you, but it is difficult. I oh, know. It's Mrs. Bloss for a start. Yeah. Still, we'll be all right tonight. As I was coming out of the cinema, she was going in. <laughs> Actually, she'll be gone for ages. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> in that case, come over here. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to like living around here. <laughs> I also think I'm going to kill whoever that is. <laughs> Who is it? Who's oh, no. I don't want him to find me in here. No, well, he's not your father. Yeah, but you know what he's like. He'll be disappointed in me and I'll feel terrible. Well, I'm going to hide under the bed till I get rid of him. I can't. Yes, well, yeah, yeah, just coming. Go on, it'll be a long half. What for love? <laughs> hey, Rich. Just sort of pop round. I didn't like to think of you sitting here on your own. Oh, well, that's nice of you, but I'm fine, honest. I suppose you fancy coming dancing, do you? 
Well, that's very kind of you, Reg, but you're not really my type. <laughs> you are a wag. <laughs> now, I wondered if you fancied making up a foursome with a missus and her sister. They say she's not bad looking from a distance. Well, that's very nice of you, but I think I'll give it a nice. As you like. Well, if you've got to get off, Reg, don't let me keep you. No, no rush. I'm sure the missus will find someone for a foxtrot. <laughs> she usually does. Don't mind if I come in, do you? Well, I was just... <clears throat> Mrs. Bloss is a lovely woman, isn't she? Yes. Yes, she's very vigilant. I sometimes wonder what might have happened if I'd met her before I met my Minnie. Mm. <laughs> Life. It's a funny thing, isn't it, son? Yes. Oh, thank God, an air raid. Oh, right. Thought they might give us a rest tonight. No, don't panic. It's the dots who get it tonight. Apart from one bomb that falls on Gibbons Furniture Warehouse. What? Well, um, I mean, that is intelligence leads us to believe that a bomb might hit Gibbons Furniture Warehouse, you know, and that's nowhere near here, is it? Gibbons. Gibbons. Sure, I used to know where that is. It's just around the corner. Yvonne. She must have heard about Gary. I've been dreading this. Why are you in there? You can't run away, Ron. This poor woman's searching for reasons why her husband talked himself. You must speak to her. Ron! Maybe I'll ring her later. Ron, that's all right, Ron. I can see your Mr. Blobby is taking over your office. <laughs> Sorry, I just needed a minute. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Stella's told you, has she? Yeah. It must hurt. Well, naturally, I'm disappointed. But life goes on. <laughs> disappointed is a good start, Yvonne. But you mustn't bottle up your feelings. Well, there's no point in brooding, Ron. There'll be other jobs. Jobs? Right. You know, so this one in Macclesfield's turned out to be a crock. All I can do is put it down to experience. Where's Gary? You haven't heard anything from him? Or about him? Well, not since he left for Scotland. Oh, he's not still there, is he? No, I mean, I've got no idea. Oh, come on, Ron, you must have a contact number for him. I'm sorry, Yvonne. You can't phone where Gary's gone. Oh, great. Just when I really needed him. I've had a lousy time. Listen, Yvonne, I want you to know I'll always be here. That's nice. <laughs> if ever you need a strong shoulder to help you through the long, lonely nights... I beg your pardon? Anything you need, you just have to ask. I don't believe this. What? You making a pass at me. No. Yes, you held my hand and you said you'd give me anything I want in the long, lonely night. I meant support. Support? I come in here feeling down. My husband is away God knows where. I'm defenceless and you try it on. You take one more step towards me and I'll put your groin in traction. Defenceless didn't last long. And I'll tell you something else. When Gary gets back, I'm telling him. <laughs> I knew Gary's suicide was a bad idea. Because now I want to kill him myself. <laughs> Baby, what should I do? Well, I'll just put it down there for now. There's a dirty great parachute mine hanging off the school hall. Tell him to bring all the injured in here, Ridge. Right, yeah. What can I do to help? Do you know how to put on a bandage for a fracture of the lower jaw? Well, short answer, no. Well, then go and put the kettle on. No, no, no. Go and help Vera with Albert over there. It's OK. Oh, my God. Is it bad, son? Go on, I can take it. I'm sorry. It looks like you've lost your leg. Oh, God, not another one. <laughs> he lost that leg five years ago when he got drunk and fell down a coal hole. You'll be all right, Albert. You've just had a bang on the head. I'm sorry. Though. Yeah, you're right, son. All this pain and suffering. This is from one bomb. Why weren't all these people down a shelter? Well, not everybody likes it down the shelter. They seem to take a chance and keep in their own beds. And poor old Sid there, he was up on a roof, so he really caught a packet. Up on the, up on the roof? <laughs> well, what did the stupid bugger expect? <laughs> what on earth was he doing? 
going on there? Fire watching. <laughs> it's like you're going to be doing it tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah.